Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of our Hardcore Let's Play series. I hope you guys are all having a great day today. Guys, I'm finally starting to feel better, so thank you so much for all the well wishes. I really appreciate that. So wow, you guys really take your diamond challenges pretty seriously. For those of you who don't know, the diamond challenge is a challenge that we are running on this series. Until the end of January 2024, for each new sub that we gain, we're going to mine a single diamond for each. At the time of recording this challenge, we currently have 803,308 subscribers, and we started at 801,940, meaning we've got to get 1,368 diamonds so far from one video. You guys are pretty wild, but you know what? I love a challenge, and it's always been a lifetime goal of mine with my YouTube channel to hit a million subscribers, so you know what? I welcome the challenge, and if you haven't subscribed already, I hope you would consider doing so. In today's episode, I've got a lot planned for you guys. Not only are we doing the interior of the base today, we're going caving. We need to get diamonds for ourselves before we can even start the diamond challenge. We got to do some enchanting before we go caving. We're going to be working on our raid area a little bit to make it a little bit easier to get totems. So before we do anything else, I actually have a quick question for you guys. I know a lot of you love shaders and some of you are sort of on the fence about it. So one thing I'm kind of curious about is how do you feel about this shader pack right here? I have been working on making BSL shaders playable as a long-term viability. I like this shader pack a lot, but I only want to use it if everybody likes it. So I'm still working on it and just, you know, let me know your feelings towards it. I think the first thing that we need to do today is we need to go enchanting. That way when we go mining it's not such a huge waste that we can get some fortune stuff and that'll be pretty awesome so we can actually have some diamonds for ourselves so the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert both villagers to a zombie villager now this is pretty straightforward we just need to break the blocks inside the pin and we should be good to go we just gotta make sure that that villager in there or that zombie villager in there is not targeting us which he's not so we're fine so because we're playing on hardcore i was gonna say he'll convert first try so now that we are done with that, we can do the normal conversion process, which is just a potion and then two golden apples. So let's make our second golden apple here. There we go. So I'm very torn on what to get for my second, um, my second enchantment. I know for a fact I want fortune. I think mending is going to be the next best bet so we don't lose our tools. But unbreaking could be very helpful too. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure yet. So let's anyways, let's convert. There we go. So I have the sounds turned off. So we are just waiting on which doctor to complete now. So this is post commentary. I didn't realize that I was muted. So it took such a long time to actually get the trades that I needed. Looking at these statistics, I had to actually interact with the villagers 220 times to get Mending and Fortune 2. Never once did I see Fortune 3 at all. Unfortunately, during this time when I'm recording this clip, I don't really have a lot of material to trade with the villagers. And this guy right here, I accidentally hit, which is why his trades are so high, unfortunately. So I think the plan here is going to be to go ahead and trade to get... Um, three mendings and two fortune twos that way we can get enough to repair the diamond tools that we've been using because those tools were pretty wrecked luckily we can probably just go into the nether and get what we need for that so we don't have to like worry too much about uh repairing them with an xp farm or anything like that eventually they will repair themselves so we got the villagers that we need it's just unfortunate that uh it took so long which sucks but that happens you know what i mean all right, everybody, so I am back at the base. I just got back from doing a huge resource run. Not only did I find a trail ruins, I also found a huge plains with another village and more loot. This is everything that I found. So all of the footage from this that I have that I collected is going to be sort of a B-roll video because um, I'm about to go caving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the full caving run as well as all of that secondary b-roll stuff that's going to have some commentary it's going to sound a little weird i'll try to cut it but uh all of that'll be in an unlisted video in the description of the video so like not you're not missing anything but it's just i felt like probably not good enough to get into the actual video so let's go ahead and get started so we need to make three iron blocks 
make that. Okay, so we now have an anvil. Also, let's go ahead and eat some food here. So I have diamond tools and I don't really want to waste my diamond stuff just yet. So I think what we're probably going to do is take these tools and then just re-enchant them and then we'll, we'll have to get some XP or something. But all right. So um, first things first, we'll put mending on the pickaxe. Then we'll put um, mending on the shovel and then mending on the axe. OK, perfect. So then we'll combine both of these books and hopefully. Oh, thank God we have enough. So we have a mending portion three pickaxe. That's perfect. I'm thinking that I might want to go to the nether before I go caving, not to find any loot or anything like that. I just need to get some XP to get these things repaired up a little bit. So when I come back the next clip, I'll kind of show you the spoils of everything that we have found from the caving run. The way back from caving, I actually just saw this gnarly cave that I want to go into. So during the caving session before I popped my totem, So we do have to be a little careful, but I actually, I really do think we could probably snipe some diamonds from this. We should just be able to go straight down, look for diamonds and then leave because we have so many other materials now, we should be fine. This looks so cool. Look at all those, look how long those chains are, dude. That's amazing. I love these caves. Also, this is, this might be a mountain. No, this is snowy taiga. I was going to say, I don't know if they spawn in snowy tigers, but we may actually run into a deep slate emerald as well. I don't know. We keep our eyes open. I'm always, oh, there's already diamonds right there. I am always on the hunt for the rare items. I was tripping out earlier today because when I was mining earlier, I found like 30, 35 deep slate coal, man. I'm like, this is like, this doesn't feel rare anymore. Oh, this cave is amazing. Holy crap. Oh, oh, oh. Gotta be ultra careful. We don't have a totem anymore. Okay. So I don't think I'm going to be down here very long. I don't think I, I, I like caving is fun, but it's kind of hard to show on camera just because there's, it's kind of repetitive, right? A little repetitive. Let's just see if we can't find ourselves some diamonds. Diamonds, where are you? This, this cave is gnarly. Look at this thing. Okay. We're just going to run past these guys like nothing ever happened. Oh, that's a lot of mobs. It's a good thing. I am literally fast as lightning and I see all the diamonds. Those diamonds up there might be a little bit harder to get, though. OK. What's up with this singular diamonds game? I'm going to need you to not do that. OK, how many do we have so far? We have six. Oh, I'm sure there's probably more around. here. Oh, there's some. Come here, diamonds. I see you. Oh, this is getting sketchy. There's a so, so million mobs down here. Okay, I think I'm going to block myself in. Hold on. Yes, you, you, you go there. Okay, good job. Good job. Proud of you. Proud of you. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Come on, baby. Any more? So we have 11 diamonds so far. Perfect. Okay. All right. Time to get out of here. Get out of here. Oh my God. There's a million mobs. All right, caving sesh done. Again, we lost that totem, which really sucks. But here is everything that I got. And again, you can see the link to the full caving session in the description below, plus going to the nether to repair our tools, plus all the other stuff that I did. So first and foremost, 55 diamonds total. Ooh, hold on. So 55 diamonds total. Um, we initially only found like 30 something, but that secondary caving run then that sketchy cave got us some pretty good diamonds. So six there and I think I have some more. So five there. So that puts our diamond total at 66 redstone um, lapis. Uh, we have a lot of iron. We have copper, gold uh, books. We have mending protection three aqua affinity. I actually found that mending in a spawner. Um, three name tags and then an axolotl. So we're doing really good on the materials that we have collected. Really awesome. So I think the first thing that we need to do right away, because let's be honest, 
your boy likes to maybe send it a little bit too much it's okay i like to full send we we know that everything is fine we're gonna get some more totems today because we have already popped two from playing dumb and it's okay we're gonna be all right there we go so now we are diamond out of our minds we'll take this our tools are still the same as before so we're doing good there so now we have some diamonds to play with we have 42 that's amazing awesome so anyways i think it is time to start working on the interior of the base i don't think i'm gonna do a time lapse really really hard to do interior time lapses so when we come back we'll check everything out all right so the interior of the base is now finished this one was like kind of difficult actually just the spaces were really hard to work with but I feel like I did a pretty good job. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So um, first thing that I'm going to mention again, as I always mention, is that like dividing your interior spaces up is so, so important. It makes it to where when you come inside, it just feels like totally different areas and it makes it feel more diverse as well as like more uh, immersed inside of your own house. So with that being said, this is our little mud room type foyer. So you walk in and you can come out to the area where we'll, we'll, we'll eventually want to get a horse, I think. Um, so we just have some basic, just some design stuff here, flowers, paintings, bookshelves, you name it. So something that I did a little bit different this time was when you come into the center room, rather than having it be sort of a directional area, this is our focus point, which is our storage room. So in here we have uh, just a bed with a little bit of work over above that. We've got our diamond challenge up there. Um, so the actual real reason this room is sunk into the ground a block is because of how the chests are laid out. I wanted to put signs on them, and but I also wanted to have these up here, these trap doors in the ceilings like this, and it wasn't going to work with both, right? So just kind of taking a page out of uh, 1970s and sinking in the living room a little bit, talking pit area. So you come down and you have sort of a little bit of a carpeted area to look through your chests. These are everything that we have so far. Uh, we're starting to get pretty good amount of items here so far, so we're doing good there. Um, we will not be storing any enchanted books in this area because we are gonna be doing it upstairs. Um, one thing I wanted to do was break up sort of the wood look. Now, it's important to know why I chose wood as my interior block. The house is made of stone, right? So we need something that's warmer, contrasting feeling to do the interior with. Uh, and the different shades of wood is perfect for that. So I really like this thing right here. This like kind of L-shaped piece. Um, it really works well with the ceiling. So as you go back upstairs into the kitchen, we have sort of a trash can. Once I have more redstone stuff, I will make this a functional trash can. Um, flower pots, and I was just testing out some new design ideas that I had. The ceiling of this place was kind of hard to do, but I really like how it turned out. We'll talk about that more when we get upstairs. This is your very basic kitchen. You know, we've got food cooking. Um, just you know other more storage and more utility blocks for us to use we'll use this as we go eventually i will probably want to move my food stuff into here full time so let's go ahead and head upstairs this leads into our library so i have this like really really bad habit of not using enchanting stuff except for out of a chest and that's one thing that i really want to stop doing so when i came into the library uh, I, I decided to like change the color of the carpet to red. It feels like it's more appropriate for this area. Another thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I have a lot of plants in here. So I was like trying to use different color um, flower pots, right? Like different color plants in the flower pots. Now we're pretty short on books at the moment. Some of these are our enchanted books. Some of these are our regular books. Once we have more leather and stuff, we'll fill these up way more. So I had to craft a enchant table with the diamonds that I found and a bunch of bookshelves. One of my favorite features of this is actually this window wall right here. Um, it is, you know, it serves as a functional library piece, but it can also just kind of look and it's like, kind of like, Ooh, I could read up here. You know what I mean? So before we do anything else, let's actually go ahead and use our enchanting room. Uh, we just crafted the diamond armor that we have. So I want to go ahead and get some enchanting on these. Um, Depth Strider. You know what? Depth Strider is pretty good. I'll take that. 
uh projectile protection 2 is a very good one unbreaking no thank you oh i guess we gotta go with unbreaking oh it's unbreaking protection wow we got bamboozled um there and which one's left chest plate projectile protection 2 unbreaking 2 wow so feather falling okay our enchants just went really well oh my god it's like the first time i've ever got good enchants ever <laughs> that's crazy awesome so now that we are done with the interior of our base and we can start using it to its full ability i think it's time to head back over to our uh cheese farm our our, our raid farm area we're going to work on that just a little bit i'm going to do a time lapse because i want to kind of cover some areas with water to make it a little bit more cheesy that way we can get some easier totems because if you remember we've popped both of the ones that we've had so far so let's do it all right it is time to test our raid farm again we have made all the necessary precautions hopefully you guys enjoy that time lapse a little baby time lapse so if we did everything right all of our pillagers and everything should spawn on the other side once we get into the range of the villager that's in the building here it should set the raid off so let's see what happens here anything no maybe i took the bed nope nope there it is there it is so is he in here he is not in there he is in that one right there all right so i'm gonna chill sort of in the middle here because i don't want them to spawn behind me i want them to spawn in front of me enderman what are you doing perfect so they should all come this way they may try to go around let's um one thing that i've learned with these pillagers is that if you kill the raid captain oh well that was that was easy <laughs> okay i um I do think that we should probably kill that Enderman too, but this seems pretty straightforward, honestly. So kill this guy. Awesome. All right. No, I'm extremely happy with this. I just think that um, the only thing that we're going to need to do to make sure that we're okay is we just need to make sure that when the raid respawns, we are in the proper position. That means that we need to be as far away from this side as possible. Otherwise, they'll spawn on the other side. So we don't want to flip spawns. There we go. All right, grab our pearl. Perfect. So um, how many arrows do we have? We have a little less than three stacks of arrows. So let's see if we're going to need any more. Go up here and kill the rest of these guys real fast. The, um, the reason why... Oh, you know what I should probably do? Um let me put this here i want to make sure that uh when the ravagers come they cannot get up here that would be very very bad like even this right here get rid of that too okay perfect okay let's get rid of the rest of this raid and then i think the next raid should have a should have a ravager i believe so let's see what happens oh really come on perfect i think our i think our defenses are going to be good we should be able to get ourselves like maximum amount of uh, totems every time we do one. Come on, baby. And with it being nighttime, we should probably sleep in a second. Yeah, that's this is not going to be a problem. They're going to run towards me every time. I think I perfected it. Oh, I love it. Yes, get in the boat. 
Get in the boat. Okay, let's. I'm trying to wait for her to sleep so I can go over there, but um, I'm going to continue to kill these raids. I'll come back in a minute. This is kind of too easy almost. This isn't even, I, it's not a stacking raid farm, but dude. As long as he can't get up here, we should be fine. You can't get up? No, you can't. Oh my God. I got real nervous there for a second. I thought for uh, for sure he, my man was coming up here. Oh my God. Okay. So the only, um, so the only thing that we really have to worry about is if the, uh, Ravager that has, um, a, um, a Voker. So if we see a Voker on a Ravager, we have to kill that Evoker right away. Otherwise we got to just run. We don't want to have anything to do with that. And matter of fact, I'm going to grab an extra boat here just to be safe. But, uh, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the raid. So there's our first evoker. Go into a boat, man. There we go. So he is obviously our first priority. So it does look like I was uh, too far away to get him. Okay, perfect. So we let's kill this uh, Ravager real fast so we can go grab our totem. Okay, so this time we have another evoker. We're just going to chill here and let him get into a boat. Okay, time to kill him first. Again, we're too far away for him to do anything. There we go. Perfect. So we'll wait for them to get into there. Then we'll go kill that uh, witch and get our other totem. Is he on there? He is. Okay, we got to kill him. Oh, this is going to be tough. Got to go. Okay. So we just, we have to kill him first. He is our priority. So hopefully he won't run too much when he's on the side there. Let's try to get rid of this dude. Can't really hit him. Shout out to all the boats I placed. They're just like really holding us down right now. <laughs> the evoker's right there. That's hilarious. There's too many vexes. I gotta avoid them. So there's a guy in the bucket right there. So there's we know that there's at least two. Okay, I see. So the one on the Ravager died, which means there's a totem on the ground. Take. I'm sitting too still. Got him. Okay. They're dead. So there's another evoker over there that we're going to need to kill before we can go back. So um, just as long as we don't see a ton of X's, we should be okay. Because now we can start killing the other one. So let's try to get near this guy over here to kill him. We're going to need to go to the far side over here, though. The biggest fear we have right now is that our things are going to despawn. I can't hit this dude. Okay, I'm gonna have to go on land, I think. 
That was my last arrow. I don't think I can get in there without dying. Oh, this is so sad. You know what, dude? I'm going for it. The other one. No, the other one's right there. Time to swim. Okay. I don't think I can get to the other one. Oh my god. Did I get it? I think I got it. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Oh my god. That was so sketchy. Oh my lord. Oh. Uh, four. So we have four totems. I think that's right. There would have been three and then one. I don't know if I got all of them though. I'm I'm way too frazzled right now. Oh my lord. My heart. Oh. It's unfortunate that we lost the raid, but that's fine because that was the only reason we came there. We uh, So we have five totems. Sorry five total totems all right that's fine no worries we are okay let's head back to the base now all right so i'm back at the base from that craziness some big takeaways is, is that it works on the mobs that can go in the boats no problem we ended up with five total totems so we're safe again thank goodness um we need to get a better bow number one and number two um we need to find a better way to deal with the ravagers rather than just running that was the big problem there. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out, though, because obviously we were successful. Uh, so I want to take a look at some statistics here for time played. Um, so time played is at 0 0.81 days. Uh, one day is 24 hours. So that was that's probably what about 18 hours then. So for two episodes, we're 18 hours in. Another statistic that I want to look at is distance by boat. So 80.27 kilometers. So 80 kilometers. Uh, I don't know what kilometers is. I'm going to see what it is to miles. To miles, that's like 50 miles. That's pretty awesome because I have been traveling by boat everywhere. Some other statistics to show you. Still doing pretty well on the grass, winning everything, basically. Now, the nether quartz came in pretty handy today for me as well. Um, we have mined so many of these dumb lecterns and i want to see uh what my most m killed mob is i suppose cows are 67 those poor cows pigs 57 63 okay 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 all right all right so we are doing good in this world next time when we come back we're going to start some new stuff and have a bit more fun uh, really looking forward to maybe making my first big farm soon so i hope that you guys enjoyed this content if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for the Diamond Challenge. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you all for watching. This is iJevin. Peace out.